Hi ladies, welcome to the channel. Welcome to our session, our meeting together. I'm so excited for today. Happy New Year. And if you subscribed, I know it's been a while since I've been here on Fridays, but I'm back and I'm so excited for us to grow together and for what we're going to achieve and do in this year of 2022. You know, the Lord has been speaking to me concerning this particular meeting and session. And in fact, I was meant to do it last year for the last six months of the year, but I felt I wasn't quite prepared and quite ready. But now I feel I'm ready. I feel I'm prepared to share what the Lord has put in my heart. And you know, these Friday videos for me, it's a form of mentorship you know hanging out together fellowshipping together something that is informal and growing together and my desire for you is to grow and to become all that God has created you to be to explore every realm of your life every realm of your talent your abilities every realm of your identity every realm of your purpose and walk in the reality of it so hopefully you've had a great week hopefully you're having a great new year so far I am having a good new year so far. Um, I'm just sort of preparing for the baby to come. I'm still with child, baby Avia, so I'm very excited. Um, we are just so excited and we can't wait to meet the baby. So yeah, I, what are you having? What are you eating? What are your snacks? Tell me in the comment section. Are you having any teas, hot drinks, cold drinks? What are you having? I am having this tea called biscuit tea. and. This tea is something that a guy who works with my husband introduced him to and then my husband bought it and so when I drank it guys I was so in love and I've been trying to get my parents onto it and my parents are so in love with it so I love this tea it's called biscuit tea it tastes like biscuits so I've never had a tea that actually tastes like biscuits and you know when you're pregnant there's kind of a limit to what you can actually have so I'm really really enjoying this and true to British culture I am also having some scones I'm gonna have these with clotted cream and jam so that's my snacks for today let me know what you are having and then we'll begin our session I don't know if you guys have been excited about planning your year for me I don't know I, I found that I needed more time to just prepare myself for the year um, it's not a year that I thought oh my gosh I can't wait to plan my year have you been excited to plan your year um, do you feel like because I know for a lot of people that I've come across some of them just didn't feel like planning for the year a lot of people feel discouraged um, they feel unsure and motivated and I think because we are still in a pandemic some people feel like I don't know how I can plan around this I'm not sure if I do plan something big will it come to pass but I want you to know that whatever vision you have whatever plan that you have it will come to pass by the will of God and by the grace of God. So, so today we want to look at the spiritual side of our life, the physical side of our lives, the mental side of our lives, and also the financial side of our lives. And these are very four important uh, aspects of our lives. Now you may already have something that is even more, which is great, but the purpose of this is to make you decide is to make you think so it's not necessarily me telling you what to do but it's to make you think to make you decide what you want to do to actually see the vision for yourself to put it down and to see how you can implement that vision so i'll sort of give you pointers and directions maybe give you new ideas that you're not seeing before maybe open your eyes and help you to step outside of a box if you're in a box so that's the purpose of this and above all what we're going to do at the end of this video we're going to commit uh, all our vision all our goals and all our plans in the hands of God because the most important thing is to submit these things into the hand of God because he's able to empower he's able to help us he's able to guide us he's able to put it through for us he's able to lead us to do these things and live in the reality of them by the end of the year so that is so important Okay, so what I have on here, I have my diary, 2022 diary, and this is my vision book. And I understand that some people are visual, so they prefer to have a vision board. And there's a bit of controversy with vision boards. People think this is new age, 
in all sorts of things. Um, no comments on that, but <laughs> this is my vision book. So this is where I write the vision that God gives me, the vision that I personally have for my life. And also things that God tells me in prayer. So this also works as a journal vision slash prayer book slash journal and there's certain things that God will begin to share with you in prayer certain things and ideas that God begins to share with you in the middle of the day maybe at work and it's important that you jot these things down jot the time jot the date because you can go back and revisit these things and there's a growing desire sometimes that God puts in your heart that growing desire can go into implementing certain steps in your life and what I also like to have is a weekly planner so on a Sunday I'll probably plan my week and then I know exactly what I'm doing throughout the next week and I like to have this in writing so that when I look at it I know exactly what I'm meant to do now some people prefer to have a diary and also a planner together but it just depends with you the, the diary that I have allows you to put a lot more information into it unlike my weekly planner I don't know if you can see but this has limited space compared to this so in here is where I am more specific about what I'm gonna do during the day but here is sort of a an evaluation of what I'm gonna do in the next coming week and if anything else pops up I just put it down on here and I like to open this up and I know exactly what I'm doing and I take it off so this is how I prefer to work so some people just prefer to have one book diary slash planner but it's very important that you do have a vision book now if you want to have a vision book that looks like mine I got this on Amazon I'll link it in the description box maybe you like the color I quite liked the color I liked how it's got plants and flowers I quite like that so this is what I use and this is what I have now this is a Proverbs 31 work ethic year plan why Proverbs 31 work ethic year plan it's because when we read the book of Proverbs chapter 31 we see this woman who is being described and she begins to cover different aspects of life with excellence and one thing that is sure about everything that she does is the work ethic is the steps that she takes the way that she conducts herself the way that she moves in terms of works and not just faith these things are very inspiring for us and I believe that whether you're a mother a wife a single woman a businesswoman you're in a career a nine-to-five job I believe that any woman can find a facet of her life through this inspiration of Proverbs 31 and the scripture that we want to use today is Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 to 4 now let's just go straight into that before we, we begin says then the Lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain on tablets so that he may run who reads it amen write the vision write the vision some of you are visual so place the vision in pictures perhaps you have this vision board that you use nothing hocus pocus about it <laughs> it's a vision that you have you have pictures in your head put those pictures somewhere that you can see make it plain on tablets let it be something that is evident let it be something that you understand, something that you can explain yourself. So you must be able to explain your vision. You must be able to understand your vision. Have evidence of your vision. So this is why we are writing it down. This is why we are putting it in pictures on a board or on a piece of paper that you can see all the time. Put the vision, a picture of that vision that God has given you. And every time you'll be able to look at that poster, you'll be able to look at that picture and know and remember what God has shown you, right? Make it plain, so explainable explainable understood evident that he who reads it will run with it reading it now when you look at the word that was used for read it it actually means you must be able to see it you must be able to speak it you must be able to guard your vision so guard that vision see it speak it cover it protect it so it's still sort of like a child you're carrying a child so you cover the child you make sure that what you eat is important enough to protect the child you don't just go around telling everybody that God has shown me this and God has shown me that and this is the plans that I'm gonna do for this year you don't go around telling everybody because you're trying to guard 
the vision. It's important that we learn this first before we go into uh, the spiritual, the mental, and the physical and the financial aspect of the vision. So you must guard your vision. It's very important. Then the Bible tells us that he who runs may read it. So when you run, it simply means you have to execute, make the steps make the steps to re to live in the reality of that vision so today we're going to write down our vision maybe you've already written down your visions but we want to get to a place where these can be steps that we can implement in our day-to-day -day life amen so the first thing let's start with the first and most important thing which is the spiritual aspect of your life Now, personally, I find that the spiritual aspect of our lives is actually the most simple one. I find that when you get to the physical, it gets a little bit more complicated. But the spiritual aspect of your life is the most important aspect of your life. So what have you written down concerning your spiritual life? Where do you see yourself spiritually by December 2022? Have a think about that. Where do I see myself spiritually in 2022 by December? How do I want to be spiritually? What kind of a person do I want to be spiritually by December 2022? What do I want to achieve spiritually by 2022? What do I admire that I would want to see in my own life spiritually by 2022? Just have a think about that. Have a think about that. Maybe you've already written down something, but just have a think about that. What do you want to see? spiritually in your life for me personally I want to be a more prayerful woman so I decided I think from last year I really decided I want to be a more prayerful woman and you know when you have a desire and you don't do anything about it so you can say I desire to have more faith I desire to be more prayerful. I desire to grow in my faith. I desire to evolve spiritually, but it's a desire. But what are you going to do with that desire? It's a vision. You've written the vision down. You aspire to be like Catherine Kuhlman and like Joyce Meyer or one of those big names. And this is not a controversial video, so let's not get controversial about the preachers with the big names. But maybe you desire to be like a certain spiritual person because you've understood or they've shared their testimony about how they pray at least two hours a day and you have been inspired by that personally i'm inspired by people like apostle joshua selman i'm inspired by certain teachers that i watch in the word i'm inspired by certain lifestyles of certain preachers how they conduct themselves in terms of their prayer life it's inspiring but Let's say you're inspired by somebody who prays two hours a day, every day. It's important that you look at your time. So how can we implement this desire? For example, you desire to be a more prayerful person. So by the time you get to December, your prayer life should have shifted you to another level in the spiritual realm. So how are we going to get there? where you are shifted into another realm spiritually, a higher realm compared to where you are today. A realm of where the heavens are opened more wider for you because of your prayer life. How do we shift to get to that position? First of all, you have to look at your life with soberness. You have to be sober and look at your life. How much time do you have? So first, number one, how much time do I have? So now we've passed the vision side. The vision is I want to grow in terms of my prayer life. So now we are planning. How do we grow? First of all, we grow by praying, but you need to look at your time. So the time that I had personally 10 years ago um, is different from the time that I have today. 12 years ago, I was in full-time education and I had a part-time job. The time that I had then is completely different to the time that I have now. So it's important that you understand and work with what you have. So time, how much time do you have? How much time can you spare in your prayer life? Don't have these very overly ambitious ideas like I want to pray six hours a day, but you are a mother, you are a wife, 
and you go to work. So where are you going to find six hours a day to pray? We have to be realistic here and we have to be honest with ourselves. So how much time can you spare for your prayer life? Don't feel ashamed if only you can spare 30 minutes a day. Don't feel ashamed about that. Don't be afraid. Don't feel like, oh, where am I going to get? How am I going to move with just 30 minutes a day of prayer? Don't be ashamed. God is going to work with what you have. God always likes to work with what we have. God worked with what Moses had. God worked with what Abraham had. God worked with what Paul had. God worked with what John the Baptist had. God worked with what Ruth had. God worked with what Deborah had. God always works with what you have, what you have in this particular season. So if you can only spare 30 minutes a day, be honest with yourself. I can only spare 30 minutes of my time a day in prayer. Now you have to understand that prayer is not something that we do to take a box. It's not a way for us to take a box and say, hey, look at me, I pray 30 minutes a day, every day I've been so faithful for five months. No, <laughs> it's not like that. It's important to understand the principles and the purpose of prayer. So firstly, we have to have a revelation of what is prayer? Prayer is talking with God. You are talking with God and you can talk with God anytime, but this 30 minutes is really when you can give it your all undivided time. Undivided from your job, from children, from a spouse, from your education, your degree, from assignments. Undivided time with the Father. That's very powerful. Whether it's 30 minutes, whether it's an hour. That undivided time. When you give it all your heart. You go in the presence of the Lord with all, with all your heart, with no shame, with boldness, with assurance, with perseverance, with expectation, with excitement. I'm going to the presence of the Father today. And you begin to build on that. And maybe God will add more time into your life. God will begin to give you ease around you. You begin to find there's ease, there's wiggle room around you because you have submitted and you have sown a seed of 30 minutes a day in prayer. So the plan, you want to grow in your prayer life. You see yourself as a more prayerful person by the end of the year. But this can also work in terms of growing your faith Bible study. So in terms of growing your faith, maybe that's the vision that you have. You want to grow spiritually. That means you need to study the word of God. So study the word of God. Let's say you have 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes a day. So that's the plan. The plan is I'm going to pray for 30 minutes every day. Or I'm going to pray for 30 minutes from Monday to Friday. Or I'm going to give one hour into prayer. I'm going to give one hour into the studying of the word. Or what I'm going to do is on Mondays, I'll give one hour in prayer. Tuesdays, one hour in the studying of the word. Whichever works for you. But time. You have to know your time. How much time do you have? So, one hour in prayer. One hour in the studying of the word. One hour in just praising God. Worship as the Spirit leads you. So, the plan is to give one hour a day. So how do we implement this? This is where your diary comes in. So you take out your diary or your planner and you choose the days and the times that you're going to do that. So what is the best time for you personally in this season of your life? For me, three years ago, I was in full-time education. That means I had no time in the afternoon. It's because I was in class, I was in a lecture, I was doing an assignment. So it was impossible for me to spend time in the afternoon. So you have to look at your 24 hours, look at the 24 hours that you have in this particular season of your life. So what times of the day or of the night can you submit for this vision that you have? Is it maybe at 5 a.m., 6 a.m.? Is it maybe at 3 a.m.? Be honest with yourself. <laughs> so if you're somebody that likes to sleep a lot, so you know that you love your sleep, be honest with yourself. Are you going to keep this up? If you say 3 a.m., but you are somebody that by 9 p.m. you are out like the light by 9 p.m. So you're somebody that really does not wake up at night. So you must work with who you are and what you have. For me personally, I like to wake up and pray. And me and my husband, we also wake up every day, Monday to Friday, we wake up at 6 a.m. and we pray for one hour at least. 
and then we go about our day work and other things that we have to do so that's what works for us also I can wake up at 3 a.m. so this has always been a pattern that I've always had even in my single days I always used to wake up in the night so I like to pray in the night because for me I find that it's more quiet it's just more peaceful and there's something about you know a time when people are sleeping and you're just seeking God it's something about seeking God at 3 a.m. at 4 a.m. at 5 a.m. at 6 a.m. for me that's what works for me but it might not work for you because you're not that person you find that you prefer to pray maybe at 2 p.m. Maybe with your job, it works at 2 p.m. Maybe with your children, it works at 2 p.m. Maybe just your general lifestyle. Maybe it works better for you at 2 p.m. or at 5 p.m. or at 8 p.m. or at 9 p.m. So it all depends on your time. So this is where we go in the planner. The best time for me to pray. For some of you, it's going to be 8 p.m. And it may require you to change certain patterns if you're going to choose to pray because this is serious this is not a game this is not just about writing a vision this is truly trying to implement this vision and get you to that place where you are that woman or that man that is prayerful that woman and that man that is elevated into a different realm because your prayer life is growing so it's not a game you have to be honest with yourself so if you're going to wake up at 5 a.m you need to sleep early you need to change your times sleep early so if you are a person that sleeps at 2 a.m. and you have to wake up at 5 a.m. it's not really it's not really going to work in the long run because you will burn out you cannot do that so it means you have to change the way that you handle your time so the thing with a vision it means we have to look at different aspects of our life and make sure that we are able to implement these things make sure that we are prepared to implement the vision so what are the times that you want to start praying what are the times that you're going to give to the lord what are the times and what are the days specifically it doesn't have to be every day every day is just an example it can be three days a week and you give two hours two hours to the lord just in prayer two hours of prayer three days a week Two hours of just studying the Bible three days a week it depends with your time how much time do you have and what days can you begin to implement it so this is where the diary comes in and this is where the planner comes in so I would begin to put this in my diary so I would do this for the whole year so for example Tuesdays and Thursdays work for you and you want to give two hours every time on Tuesdays and Thursdays two hours of prayer and two hours of Bible study and the most important thing is consistency and faithfulness this is what God looks at is certain characteristics so faithfulness perseverance persistence these are things that God is looking at focus so when you see people being promoted in the spiritual realm it's because there's certain targets that they've hit because of their faithfulness when you see people being increased and there's grace that is coming upon their life because there's a target there's a place that they've hit because of their faith because of their faithfulness it's about your faithfulness as you get to that place of growing spiritually through prayer through study of the word so I hope that this can help in terms of the spiritual aspect of your life and I understand that this video is going to be quite long because we have a lot to cover so yeah so hopefully this can help you to put things in place so you'd start to put in your diary from January to December this is what I would do personally so Tuesday every Tuesday in my diary I go to Tuesday let's say I have decided that at 9 p.m. I'm going to bed and at 9 30 once once I'm settled in bed this is the time that I'm going to study the word this is the time that I'm going to pray for two hours or for one hour set your alarm and this means that your social life will change on Tuesdays and Thursdays so it's a sacrifice God is also looking at that sacrifice your social life on Tuesdays and Thursdays is going to be a bit different because you've committed to the vision how committed are you to the vision? Can you make it plain? Can you run with it? Can you see it and read it? 
it's a commitment and it's a sacrifice and people will begin to invite you to places on Thursdays on, the, on those specific days you find people inviting you but you're gonna have to say no I'm sorry I'm busy I'm sorry I won't be able to do that you have to change certain things because there's a sacrifice that will be required so that's the spiritual aspect of life a lot of us want to grow spiritually and that is through prayer studying of the word then let's get to fasting fasting now fasting what it does for the believer is that fasting empowers us spiritually this is why we see that on the Lord Jesus Christ he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and he was tempted in the desert the Bible tells us that he came out of that desert and that wilderness in the power of the Holy Spirit so fasting empowers us spiritually it empowers us spiritually and constantly we see the Lord Jesus Christ in the four Gospels he begins to say hey you guys you couldn't take that demon out you, you couldn't cast that spirit out because this one comes out by fasting and prayer so fasting is very important for the believer fasting is very important for the believer and fasting is a very controversial topic uh, for the believer it's all kinds of teachings on fasting but we all have the Holy Spirit and he's able to help you the Holy Spirit is able to teach you how to fast and above all you can commit your fasting to the Holy Spirit so fasting how do you want to go about that perhaps that's one of your visions you want to fast because you want to be more empowered so the vision for you may be you want to be more empowered in terms of your spiritual walk so how do we get there we get there through fasting and prayer fasting and prayer so again we have to look at our time we have to plan this let's look at our time there was a time when I was in full-time education and I was also working part-time but in that season of my life the Spirit of God began to call me to fasting and prayer so I actually had to leave my job my part-time job and what I'll do is every Saturday I would actually be fasting and praying and I remember in the summer times I did this for a few months in the summertime I'll be watching and I live outside a park so this was in London and I would just watch people just having fun in the park. Sometimes there'll be amusement stuff happening in the park. And I'll just be in my room and I'll just feel like, gosh, I'm missing out. And in those days, my cousins were practically my best friends. So we'd always meet up and, you know, go out to eat meals and explore London and do all sorts of things. But in that season of my life, I couldn't do that on Saturdays. I had to sacrifice. So, you have to understand that if you're gonna choose this path of fasting there will be distractions there will be things that you'll begin to miss doing because it's going to require your time your day so for you personally what days do you want to fast what days work with you is it once once a month on a Saturday is it twice a month on Saturdays is it every Monday every week is it once every six months what works with your schedule what works with your season and your lifestyle and your life so this is something you need to think about as you plan around fasting you want to reach a certain realm in the spiritual realm you desire to see miracles signs and wonders but it comes at a cost it comes at a cost of fasting and praying now sometimes what the enemy does is that he sees that desire that you have but he'll begin to say hey look at this preacher look at that prophet they fasted for 40 days and 40 nights they fasted for 20 days they did the Daniel fast if you do the Daniel fast you get to the level that they are at so already there's comparison happening here you don't have 40 days and 40 nights to fast and maybe you're just not a person that can fast for 20 days and do the Daniel fast. That's just not you. Again, you have to work with what you have. Don't force these fasts whereby you get sick and things begin to happen inside your body. Do not do that to yourself. Work with what you have. Get wisdom from the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, how do I go about the fasting? Holy Spirit, how can I go about the fasting? For me personally, I used to fast a lot. Like, <laughs> I used to fast a lot. And sometimes, I think I've said this before, I would, uh, I would fast for three days without eating anything. So three dry days, 
without eating anything and you know i was just so zealous i was just so zealous for god so zealous for growing and you know it's like those baby steps you're just taking those baby steps and god understands but in the end i'll be vomiting in the end i'll be trying to crawl to get to the toilet i'll be so hungry i'll be struggling and it's not how it should be it shouldn't be like that then there are times when I've fasted for three days and three nights. And because those particular fasts were led of the Spirit, I had still power at the end of the three days. I did not vomit. I wasn't struggling. Even though, yes, my body will be weak, even though you do feel hungry. But there's just this peace. There's this assurance that this is of the spirit there's no fear there's no doubt and surely it's it's just smooth it is an ease to it so if you want to go down the route of fasting maybe once every month make sure you include the Holy Spirit just say Holy Spirit help me to fast that that's all that you need it's not a complicated thing God is not complicated the Holy Spirit is your helper He's your teacher Holy Spirit, help me to fast. Give me ease in this fasting. Help me to fast in a way that glorifies the Lord Jesus Christ. Help me to pray and fast. Show me signs, miracles, and wonders through this fast. Empower me through this fast. Take me to another level through this fast. Holy Spirit, lead me in this fast. So again, we are taking our diary. Sorry, our diary. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. You look at all those months, put down the days that you'll be fasting. What days are you going to be fasting? And what sort of fasting are you going to be doing? Is it a fast where it's the whole day? Perhaps it's a fast. I know these days people fast from television and from their phones, which is great. But what I'm talking about here is it's a fast that um, is about food. So it depends what you want to fast for. Maybe you you're addicted to your phone, so you want to fast concerning your phone. Fair enough. Um, maybe you're fasting from television. That's great. Um, but fasting from food is what I'm precisely. Um, talking about so what days are you going to fast don't compare yourself with preacher so and so and pastor so and so and prophet so and so be honest with yourself be honest honesty is very important be real with yourself how much what days can you give for fasting because you don't want to get to the middle of this and you cannot keep it up because you're trying to be like somebody else it's, it's not really good for you so what days if once you have decided on the days and the times that you'll be fasting, I know with times again, it's, it's like a complicated thing. Let the spirit lead you. There's nothing wrong if the spirit is leading you to fast from midnight to 12 p.m. in the, the next day or from midnight to 6 p.m. It's, it's not really about, oh my gosh, it's still 5.58 p.m. I break my fast at 6 p.m. I have to wait those two minutes. It's... It's not about that it's, it's not really about that like I have to really complete the two minutes and I cannot go over a minute I have to go over a minute it gets really religious it's not a religious thing these are things of the spirit so don't make it overly religious and difficult for yourself so so just decide in your heart what times are you going to be fasting Maybe you're a mother, you have to breastfeed, you have to look at all these things. Maybe you're your wife, you have to be available sexually. Perhaps you're single, but your workloads, your lifestyle, you have to look at all those things. Your education, you are having exams, but now when you're having exams, you're saying, I need to fast. Think about those things because you have exams and you're thinking about fasting. So one of those things has to go down. Just be honest be wise be intelligent about this so once you have decided and you haven't compared yourself with anybody else you put down the days and when it comes to the planner you obviously check with your diary first so let's say next week is the time that you're fasting on a wednesday you put that fasting and the times so that you know that on that particular day you're fasting you just prepare your heart for it so in terms of spiritual i believe that this is the main thing that 
all of us believers want to get to in terms of growth, which comes in fasting, prayer, studying of the word. These are all things that help us to grow, that empower us as Christians. If you have anything else, um, I'm going to try and come on live maybe a month from now just to see where we are and just talk about this. Um, somebody mentioned that we should do a Zoom thing. So I'll look into that. Either I'll go live or I'll be in Zoom. But we'll look into this after some time just so we know we are on track. And if you have any questions or anything else that I've not mentioned, then it'll be a great time for us to fellowship together. So that's that's it really in time in terms of spiritually now there's certain things like ministry these are also spiritual things ministry um i'm going to cover that more in the physical aspect of things because ministry is physical yet it is spiritual so i'll put that more on the physical aspect of things and ministry can be writing a book can be uh singing a song um, on a cd it can be uh what i'm doing right here <laughs> It can be sharing uh, information on social media as the Spirit leads you. So it's, it's different aspects. It can be on the pulpit, different things. So we'll cover that on the more physical side. So let's move on. How did you find that so far in terms of spiritual? I hope that whatever you've written that I've not mentioned, that you can actually now think of steps that you can take to put that down and to implement that so that you get to the reality of that vision by the end of the year. So let's move on to mentally. Mentally. So mentally, where do you see yourself mentally in terms of your mental state of life or your mental life psychological mental like where do you see yourself by december think about that where do you want to see yourself how do you want to better that aspect of your life i think with mental as well it's also intellectual so we can put the whole intellectual psychological mental aspect of everything <laughs> in that same bracket so for example maybe you want to grow intellectually by the end of the year. You want to grow intellectually by the end of the year. You want to be more intelligent than you, than you are right now by the end of the year. So how do we get to that? How can you be more intelligent in a certain aspect of your life? Perhaps it has to do with your career. Perhaps it has to do with a passion. You have a passion concerning horses. You have a passion concerning um, golf. You have a passion concerning fishing. So how do you get to that, to that place by the end of the year where you are more educated or more intelligent or more wiser concerning that aspect of your life? Perhaps it's blogging. So how do we get to that place by the end of the year? For example, how about you studying the dictionary have you ever thought about that this is something that my husband is doing currently I, I thought it's a brilliant idea so he memorizes one big word every week so how about you memorize one big word from the dictionary every week and then by the end of the year 52 let's say you have about 49 because already we're in the second week of January so by the end of the year you have about 49 or 50 big words that you can understand and speak and add to your vocabulary right now. How amazing would that be? Perhaps in your job, you have people that are very intellectual. Learn a word that you've never learned before. Learn a word that you never knew before. And this can work with also learning a different language. Um, I think two years ago, I was trying to learn uh, Spanish. So I found some free Spanish classes uh, online. So maybe you want to learn Spanish. Perhaps you are intrigued by the Spanish culture. Maybe you travel to Spain a lot. Maybe it's France. You're interested in the French and the Parisian culture and the trends. How about you learn French once a week? Get a free class online. You don't have to pay money for most of these things. Some of these things are free on YouTube. So the plan to grow intellectually, this is the plan learning one big word from the dictionary every week 
doing a free online Spanish or French or a different language that you don't know before doing a free class online once a week and by the end of the year your vocabulary has changed your understanding of languages has changed you can speak a new language it really broadens your mindset it helps you mentally intellectually these are things that can help you so again we have to look at our time how much time can I spare to this and I believe, you know, it's a year to really grow and it means some things have to go. Some things like watching Netflix all day, those things have to go. Scrolling social media for five hours every day, those things have to be done with. We have to change the way that we live, change the way that we handle the time that God gave us. We have the same 24 hours, but what are we doing with that 24 hours? Could I be doing something better? That will help me intellectually by the end of the year. This is something you need to think about. So again, you go in your diary. I want to learn French. And if you're really serious, you can take a course and pay money for it. You can find a course that is not very expensive, something that you can really afford if you're really serious about it. Maybe you can just read books. Maybe you're interested in interiors, you're interested about the culture, the French culture, the Parisian way of living. Maybe just read books. How can I advance intellectually? How can I advance mentally? So again, it requires you to look at your time. Look at your days. How much time do I have? Can I spare 30 minutes a week? Can I spare an hour a week? Can I spare 15 minutes a day? How much time do you have for this thing? Because your diary has to be full by the end of the year. Our diaries have to be full of stuff that will help us get to a better facet of who we are, of who God created us to be. We have to change the way that we do things. So what are you going to do? Are you going to memorize one big word every week? Are you going to learn a new class, a new language? Perhaps you're going to read more books. You want to grow intellectually. And a lot of people do this. A lot of people read books. That's how we grow intellectually. Maybe there's an aspect of your life that you want to sort it out. Perhaps it's your finances. We're going to touch on finances. Perhaps it's your emotions. It's your mental health. Perhaps it's a passion that you have. You can just get books that center around mental health, that center around your passion, that center around your desire or your gift. Perhaps it's a gift that you have. Perhaps it's a hobby. We're going to get to hobbies physically. Perhaps it's a hobby, but how can you advance mentally concerning that hobby? How about you read a book concerning those things? So get a book every month. Read one book every month. And this is exciting because now you can research on those kind of books. Maybe you cannot afford to buy a certain book. You can go to a library nearby, a library near you. Look for books that speak about those things that you want to grow mentally in. So there's a lot of things that we can do here. So these are examples that I gave. Learn a big word. Read a book once a month. It just works with what time that you have. Um, learn a new language. And also something that is, I find is quite popular. It's, it's sort of trendy now to uh, go to therapy. It's more like a trendy thing, but that can be something that you can do. Go to therapy. Some of you, you're blessed with friends that are like therapists, but I do not recommend that you use your friend as a therapist. <laughs> But uh, maybe taking therapy will be good for you. And of course, that will require money. But I believe they, there's a way that you can work around that. We are living in a time when we are going through a lot of stuff, a lot of pain, a lot of disappointments, um, uh, just a lot of heartbreak that is happening in life through different things that are happening in the economy, um, in our countries, devastations that have to do with the climate, uh, devastation that have to do with the governments. So it's all sort of things that are happening and perhaps that can begin to affect you mentally and you need somebody to talk to. So this is another thing that you can begin to do this year. Perhaps you've looked down on therapy. Perhaps you're already taking therapy as a form of a trend and so you can tell your friends, look, I, I go to therapy because all your friends are going to therapy. Don't do stuff because people are doing it. 
do stuff that is going to truly benefit you don't spend money on a therapist because people as because all the people around your life 80 percent of the people around your life are going to therapy don't do stuff to follow a trend or to be part of the in crowd to do stuff that truly relates to your life be honest with yourself do you truly need therapy is this something that is going to benefit you a lot of people say yes but if it's not going to benefit you and you're saying no i don't need therapy it's not going to benefit me it's not that deep <laughs> whatever that you're saying just apply that to your life it's not about what everyone else is doing but it's about your life walking in your vision growing and being edified that by the end of the year you are somewhere else mentally then there are things that we can do mentally that can help us things that concern the way that we look at our lives for example being grateful gratitude gratitude is so important it's it's healthy for your mindset to be grateful for what you have grateful for who you are and there are particular diaries or planners that uh, center around gratitude so maybe if it's something that you want to work on this year because what happens when you're not grateful for what you have is that you can go into a lifestyle of keeping up with the Jonases it's a very dangerous place to be when you're not grateful for who you are and what you have if you're not grateful for your season today, it can get you to one, compare yourself with other people, be jealous of other people, be envious of other people. We see uh, in the Bible, the most popular story is of Saul. Saul had everything, but he was jealous of little David. Why? He just wasn't grateful for his own portion. David had killed Goliath and there were these women that were saying, Saul, they're slain in his thousands, but David in his ten thousands. And that song and those women and that praise that David was getting from those women, it affected Saul to the point that he was so jealous. But what if Saul was grateful for his portion? Grateful for the thousands, grateful for the crown, grateful for the seat of honor. He had everything, but he just wasn't grateful enough maybe you're looking at your life today you're looking at your friends perhaps they have something that you desire secretly but we must learn to be grateful grateful with what we have grateful with the season that we are in today gratitude will help us mentally it's not just a spiritual virtue but it's something that can help us maneuver in life with peace of mind sometimes we don't have peace of mind and you're going to therapy and all these things but the problem and the real problem is that you're not grateful gratitude so look at your life again we're going to look at our diaries can you give maybe 30 minutes a day of your week to look at your life and just thank God for the things that you have. Look at your life and just be grateful for where you are today. Is there a particular time or maybe it's every day in the morning you can just begin to say, God, I thank you for this. God, I thank you for that. And just be grateful for what you have. Perhaps it's in the morning when you wake up and you pray. Perhaps it's in the evening before you pray. Just cultivate a lifestyle of gratitude. It's important gratitude and I believe those that are grateful God begins to add more into their lives but those that are not grateful how can God add more when they're not even grateful for what they have there are people that have beautiful lives but they're just not grateful they want more and more and so greed has crept into their lives can you be grateful in this season of your life so I believe gratitude is very important for our mental health we can go to therapy and all these things, but we must tackle the issue. What is the root of these issues? Amen. So um, these are things that I can share with you in terms of mentally. Um, you might have a bit more, but as long as you can look at your diary and put down a plan and days and steps that you can take to implement that plan, something that you can transfer into your planner something that is realistic that you can implement in your day-to-day -day life okay so that's the mental aspect of our lives let's go to the physical this one is 
there's a lot to it <laughs> this is why i said um, the spiritual side is i find it it's more simple but the physical it begins to get more complicated because now we're trying to transfer things not just spiritually and mentally but down into the physical aspect of our life so gosh my tea is getting cold <laughs> so physically where do you see yourself by december physically where do you want to see yourself physically and I don't mean this geographically, but think about maybe your health. Think about your hobbies. Think about your gifts and your talents. Think about self-care. Think about friendships and relationships. Where do you see yourself physically in those aspects of your physical life? And it's a lot really to cover in terms of physically, but I'll share the ones that were put in my heart to share. So. Where do you see yourself? Perhaps you want to make your life more beautiful. How can you get there? How do I make my life more beautiful than it is today? How can we get to that place by the end of December? So think about those things. Where do you see yourself by December? Okay, so perhaps you want to be more healthy. That's one of your goals. By December, you want to be at a place where your health is going up and it's not going down so that means you need to look at your lifestyle so in terms of health that means we're going to look at our diet we're going to look at how much water we drink we're going to look at our sleep patterns again this also affects us mentally this also has to do with the mindset so we've covered the mindset but now what do you eat generally what do you eat do you eat a lot of fast food do you cook do you know how to cook <laughs> because sometimes when you don't know how to cook that can be a problem for your health in the long run so maybe you don't know how to cook that's why you don't eat healthy maybe you do know how to cook but you just feel lazy because maybe when you come from work you're very tired there's different things that are in play here in terms of how to get more healthy in terms of water how much water do you drink maybe you don't like the taste of water you hate how water tastes for me uh, in my first trimester of my pregnancy I hated the way that water tastes and I'm somebody that loves water but when I was in the second trimester I loved it so I never understood why people say I hate the taste of water I cannot stand it until I was pregnant so I understand I totally understand so Maybe you hate the taste of water, you just cannot stand it. Also, what time do you go to sleep and what time do you wake up? So these are things we need to look into. So in terms of your diet, what can you change about it? What can you change about your diet? What are you eating? Um, I believe that God gave us these bodies so that we can nourish them with certain nutrients. So it's more so about the nutrients in the food rather than the food itself of course it has to be delicious and i love food and i love to eat delicious stuff but it's about the nutrients so maybe you like to eat mcdonald's but um you, you cannot survive on mcdonald's if you are saying i'm gonna have a long life and i'm gonna live long but you're eating mcdonald's three times a week it's just not really possible for you to have a long life it's not going to work so we have to be realistic and we have to be honest with ourselves how can i change my diet because it's about the nutrients going inside of your body how much money am i spending on takeaway why can i not cook at the age of 25 how is it that i'm struggling to cook and of course not everyone can cook but maybe you can just get a cookbook somewhere there are free cookbooks free recipes online try something try and google simple recipes simple cooking recipes affordable cooking recipes how can i change my diet to something that is more healthy so these are things that we need to look at again we go into our diary so the plan is to change your diet and how are you going to change your diet you start by preparing yourself you prepare yourself by looking at what you eat so you can't say i'm going to change my diet but you're a full-time student and you're constantly doing assignments and when you come home you're very tired so you have to work with what you have how are you going to change your diet as a full-time student because the danger with uh, 
that sometimes is that you can end up just buying fast food all the time because of time and convenience however what you can do you can plan your week so you're a full-time student you don't have time you're full-time you work full-time at work you work 12 hours a day you don't have time to cook you're tired when you get home you just want to relax so let's work with what you have what can you do with the time that you have today so is there a day that you're actually free maybe a saturday or a sunday that you can commit to actually cooking meals for the entire week cooking meals for the entire week when i was a full-time student i would cook for three days so i'll cook a, a big meal that will last me for three days so i know that when i get home i'm not going to be cooking anything because i know i'll be tired so i'm just going to cook something that is going to last me three days so i put the food in the freezer i pack it for the three days that i have so that is something that can help you just spare an hour spare an hour three days a week two days a week to cook two days a week just spare an hour or two for two days a week pack your food freeze it and then you know that i'm not gonna buy fast food i'm not gonna waste my money but i'm gonna have something that is healthy so again you go in your diary put the days that you're gonna cook cook enough food for three days now it's different if you have a family it's completely different uh, some spouses don't know how to cook praise god for the spouses that know how to cook but if your spouse doesn't know how to cook and they can't help you you're gonna have to work with what you have so again you have to work with your season work with your time there are some spouses some men that believe the kitchen is only for women maybe your spouse believes the kitchen he he, he doesn't have to go in the kitchen the kitchen is only for women then you have to work with that don't don't be angry or compare yourself with other other wives who have husbands that cook and don't do that don't be bitter but just work with what you have so go in your diary we don't have time to be bitter this year no time to be jealous no time to be envious no time to complain go in your diary every saturday i'm gonna cook three different meals that will last me a week for me or just for, or for me and my family and again you choose the time and when you go in your plan and when you plan for the week you know that on wednesday i'm gonna make a meal and on friday i'm gonna make a meal or on monday and thursday i'm gonna make a meal that will last me or it will last me and my family three days so that's what you can do so again you're making a step to change your diet from eating junk food mcdonald's every week to eating something that is more healthy something that is maybe affordable for you at the time at this time another thing is drinking water drinking water is very important uh, maybe you're that person that doesn't like to drink water maybe you can get flavored water have you ever thought about that flavored water and maybe you don't want to spend a lot of money on water every time you just wish you could just drink tap water don't don't drink tap water it's not healthy for you maybe you can get a filter so buy a filter and just put all your water in there and then you can save for the entire you have filtered water put some fruits in there some berries some lemons some strawberries and, and that will actually flavor your water so you can do these things at home so again you go in your diary 2022 maybe you need a reminder drink water put it in your reminders put it in your planner drink water you can put that every day so what you can do is get a bottle on Amazon for maybe a one liter bottle or 750 bottle. They do recommend that you drink at least uh, one and a half liters a day, but start where you are. You don't have to um, do it according to the experts, but start where you can. So you're not somebody who drinks water at all. So start at 750 meals a day or started 500 meals a day then gradually grow from that and that by, by the end of the year you're at a place where your body is receiving nutrients that will help you to live that long life that you declare and your body is receiving water it's your body is made up of i believe it's 70 percent of water so your body is made up of 70 percent of water so by the time you get to december your body is receiving enough water and this will help you it will help your skin it will help your hair it will help all sorts of things concerning your health so that's that your diet and 
your drinking of water then also there's things like vegetables fruits again these can be included in your diet but maybe you need a little bit of extra stuff vitamins now I know that vitamins can get very expensive there's all kinds of vitamins out there but what you can do is look at subscriptions look at vitamins that are on offer some companies offer their vitamins maybe for the first three months first two months as a trial try and look into things like that maybe you cannot afford to be buying vitamins every week or every or every month so look into things like that there's a lot of people that are offering stuff for free there's a lot of companies that are trying to give away stuff for free just look into that giveaways offers that you can get and add that extra kick to your health through vitamins and minerals so again you can put in your diary um, on this particular day I'm gonna look for vitamins I'm gonna research for vitamins then once you get your vitamins you know that you're drinking your vitamins uh, put them in a place where you can actually remember put it in your diary set it as a reminder on your phone that I'm taking my vitamins twice a day two times a day three times a day or once a day just a reminder of what you need and another thing that you can also do is get checked at your doctor so I assume that you have a doctor you go to a GP and people are checking your health <laughs> that's very important you can check for anything that is lacking in your system so any nutrients that are lacking that you things that you need to look out for so it's very important to go to your doctor I understand that in the US healthcare is very expensive we have been really privileged here in the UK that we have the NHS I know in some countries it's very expensive to do that so do what you can what you can afford to another thing that you can look into in terms of being more healthy is looking at the time that you sleep the times that you sleep I believe that our bodies are just not created to sleep very late I don't I don't know I don't think we are meant to be still awake at 2 a.m. after you've been awake all day there's a time when your body just shuts down and it needs rest so make up your mind maybe this is going to require you to change your lifestyle all around and again this depends on all the things that you have decided to do so maybe there's things that you've decided to do concerning your prayer life concerning your hobbies your passions so you have to work around that schedule and I think it's important to go to sleep early it's very important I tend to wake up around 3 a.m. but I strive to go to bed by 11 a by 11 p.m. I should be in bed sleeping me and my husband we, we will be sleeping by 11 p.m. unless we're doing something else and yeah unless we're doing something else but we strive to be in bed by 11 p.m. so so I don't know about you maybe there's specific times that you can begin to look at your life uh, and see how much sleep you're actually getting are you getting enough sleep it's very important now let's look at self-care self-care now that one there's quite a lot to it and I wanted to write a blog post concerning that self-care because there's just so much to it but I'll just share that uh, briefly with you um, let me know if you want me to write a blog about this what is self-care what does this all involve I believe it's something that's quite trendy now it's like everybody's on this self-care thing and I do think after the whole pandemic situation and everything that's just going around the world you do need self-care so these are the, the things that I think we women can look into um, by the end of the year something that we can change and something that also makes your life more beautiful number one let's look at bedding where we sleep how, how does it look where you sleep what, what is it looking like your bedding your sheets your bedroom how does that look like and this ties in with our health you know um, as I've traveled I've been in hotels and you know there's something about a hotel that's it's just so comfortable when you go in a nice hotel the bed is just so comfortable so fluffy you sleep so well but it's because they put effort into their bedding into their sheets their mattresses so sometimes what happens with us women is that we are putting more emphasis in our hair uh, the weave the wigs and you're spending 800 pounds every six months on your hair but the mattress that you sleep on costs you 200 pounds why is it that you're spending so much on your hair and your clothes and your nails and your makeup you have this collection that is worth 2,000 pounds of makeup but the bed that you sleep on 
It only costs 500 pounds. Why is it that we are not investing in our beds, our bedding? I believe part of self-care is to invest in your bed, invest in quality sheets. If you go to a nice hotel, they invest in their sheets, those Egyptian cotton sheets. And don't be fooled by the name Egyptian cotton, but the thread count is what counts. So the higher the thread count, the more luxurious, the more softer they are. And these days, there's bamboo sheets. Um, I actually bought some bamboo sheets the other day. They are very soft, but they're not very durable. However, they are very comfortable to sleep on. Um, I would re recommend bamboo. Uh, there's also silk, silk sheets. Then if you're gonna get Egyptian cotton, get at least 800 thread count uh, Egyptian cotton sheets. Invest in your sheets, women. Let's invest in our bedding invest in a comfortable mattress topper before you even look about your hair before you even worry about your outfit think about where you spend your life the most this is in your bedroom your bed this is where you spend a lot of time in it a lot of your life is spent sleeping on your bed so that's very important we live in a very image driven world but let our priorities be centered around the right things bedding very important so that is what I can recommend in terms of self-care look at bedding so again in your diary your vision is to have a luxurious bedroom or a very comfortable bed your dream or your vision is to sleep somewhere where it's so comfortable and you don't want to get out of bed that's your vision that's your self-care vision so what are you gonna do do your research find affordable bedding 800 third count egyptian cotton sheets flat sheet uh duvet cover and uh what's the other one? pillowcases so find 800 thread count plus egyptian cotton bedding and also find a mattress that is very comfortable there are a lot of comfortable mattresses out there that are very affordable so do your research find a day this week in january find a day in this month of january that you're going to do all that research and look at your budget how much money are you spending out maybe you spend a lot of money going out but where you sleep it doesn't look good where you're sleeping it doesn't look right you spend a lot of money on your nails and your hair and your skin, your makeup, but where you sleep, it's not right. Where you're sleeping, sis, it's not good. So priorities, priorities, self-care priorities this year. I also put here a hobby. I believe hobbies are good for self-care. Sometimes, um, I don't know if you're maybe dating, you're watching this video, you're dating, you are in a relationship, Sometimes it's good to have hobbies, even if you're married. It's good to have hobbies, ladies. It's good to do things that you do on your own, things that you like. Don't have a life of having no life. When you're married, you have no life. Everything is about husband, husband, spouse. I'm married, look at me, I have a ring. By the way, I'm not wearing my rings. So in case you're thinking, oh, there's trouble in paradise. The only trouble is that there's water retention because I'm practically fat because of pregnancy. So, Ladies, it's so important to have a hobby outside of your boyfriend, outside of your friends, outside of your spouse. You know, sometimes I think when women get married, it can become about hubby and husband and hubs and okay, what else do you do outside of hubs and hubby and husband? Like find something that you're passionate about find a hobby we are individuals and we come together into union in marriage but you are still an individual you still have an identity of your own even though you are hidden in your husband but you have an identity find hobbies women it's very important and sometimes you might think oh i don't actually know what my hobbies are i don't have any hobbies i, I don't know what to do you really truly want to get a hobby um just look at things that you enjoy do you like horses do you like art do you like music what is it that you find joy in um what is it that you that makes you smile that makes you happy maybe you like little children is there something that you can do that centers around little children that centers around horses that centers around um centers around 
singing centers around sewing centers around makeup something that you enjoy most women love makeup and stuff like that hair so look into that find a hobby something you enjoy something that's outside of the identity of wife girlfriend friend something that's about you and don't try to copy other people and you know try to replicate somebody else's life what do you personally enjoy you know it's very important because you can try to imitate other people and try to have another life but you won't find joy in that so what brings you joy again diary <laughs> Look into your diary. I think most of these things are things that we need to look into in January so that by February we know the steps that we need to take. So January, what do I enjoy? I need to dedicate a day in January to find out what I actually enjoy. What makes me happy? What makes me smile? Question yourself. Daphne, what do I enjoy? Daphne, what do you love doing? What are you passionate about? Write all those things down on a list and then begin to pick things that you can transfer into hobbies for example maybe it's horses you can begin to transfer that into a hobby begin to look at horse riding classes around where you live something affordable or begin to just watch videos and research about horses the type of breeds the colors anything that would just satisfy that passion that you have concerning this thing and it's self-care and it goes into the mental health as well it just gives you this fulfillment so that is so 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 important ladies so important and again with self-care i put nails and hair which is pretty self-explanatory um but these things can get very expensive so you know we want to be wise women we don't just spend money all willy-nilly especially if we can do it ourselves personally i do my own nails although i live really near near a nail salon i used to get them done there but i do actually enjoy doing my own nails the reason is that that's when i get time to speak to the holy spirit that's when i get time to speak to the lord and i just begin to have conversations with him in fact some of the best conversations i've had with god was when i was doing my nails so there's a lot of stuff that we can buy now on amazon we can basically buy the same tools that they use to do our nails in the nail salon of course it's about the experience when you go to the nail salon the indulgence the excitement of somebody doing your nails and the whole experience of being in the salon but um, if you can do your own nails it just depends on what you like then do your own nails uh, do your own thing so um, nails are very important to do and this is something that my mom has always emphasized on my mom if she's watching this video if she would see my nails chipped my mom will be on my case she'd be like do not walk out of the house especially with the red nail polish because that's my favorite one of my favorite colors you don't want your nails to be looking chipped there's a picture that that gives whether you're somebody who's really well groomed or you're somebody that really takes care of themselves but when your nails are not done it just gives off this impression of somebody who's lazy i'm just speaking as my mom would say somebody who's lazy somebody who just doesn't care about what they look like and she also emphasizes on hair because her mother would emphasize on hair so my grandma would always emphasize to my mom and my aunts that we need to have our hair done it's very important it's not necessarily having it done but having it neat just make sure your hair looks neat whether it's a wig a weave it just has to look neat whatever hairstyle it is it's very important that your hair looks neat so make sure you you brush the edges the back everything is brushed everything looks nice and neat and clean so i think that's very important in terms of self-care uh, we live in such a digital world now that there's so much information in terms of how to take care of our nails how to take care of our hair and then there's another one skin taking care of your skin again there's so much information with natural diy ingredients that you can use to take care of your skin you don't have to use expensive stuff you can use what you can afford in this season in this climate of your life so again diary very important so what days are you going to do your nails is it twice a month once a month i don't think you can actually do your nails once a month you'd have to change your nail polish quite often so let's say twice a month you do your nails so what days can you do that maybe you're somebody who's very busy if you're very busy then just keep them short and neat if you don't have time for that 
keep them clean put clear nail polish just keep them short keep them clean and short something that's ideal for you if you have a day you have a weekend then use that weekend maybe saturday i remember when i was managing a team i worked in finance and i was managing a team and by the time i get home i have to do other things that i needed to do for my own personal life concerning my hobbies and things that i did outside of work so the only time that i had for myself was saturday and sunday sunday you know how it is in uh churches with people of color you spend the whole sunday in church so you don't have any time at all so um technically the only time that i had for myself was saturday evenings so these were my self-care days saturday evenings this is when i look into my hair i look into my skin and my nails this is when i just focus on me so um find a day put it in your diary this specific day is when i am going to do my nails put down exactly what you're going to do to your nails and is there something that you like so do you like a particular color make it your thing maybe you like nude nail polish make it your thing enjoy it do your nails you like white nail polish you like to change all your styles differently maybe this can be a hobby research different nail arts things that you can enjoy and do a little hobby on the side it's very 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 helpful ladies so nails skin and hair this is just one uh, self-care thing that we can begin to use implement in our day-to-day -day life it's very important to have our hair neat our nails neat our skin has to be looking decent so this ties in again with your diet it ties in with how much water you drink I find that when I don't sleep a lot uh, my skin tends to look quite rough the next day if I don't have enough sleep you know these things they really affect our skin so you can use the best products but you're not eating right and you're not sleeping and you're not drinking any water so all of this ties in together so again in your diary in your planner this is something that you can look into twice a week sorry twice a month your skin your hair and your nails for me personally in terms of hair this is my hair but i wear a lot of protective styles because i cannot physically have my real hair out 24 hours every day 365 days a year I, I, I can't do that and some of you girls you are natural like me so you understand where i'm coming from especially if you have quite a busy lifestyle it's just not possible so make sure you take care of your hair inside the weave inside the wig it's very important to take care of our hair do not abandon your hair because you're wearing a wig don't put so much emphasis in the weave and the hair and then you neglect your own hair it's not really good for you it's important that you take care of your hair inside the wig inside the braids whatever hairstyle that you're doing this hair it's very important that we take care of it because this is what God gave us this is the glory that he gave us so I, personally I'm not one of those people that um, are very like oh I can't wear a wig and don't wear a wig. I'm not those people so I, I'm not like that so I'm gonna wear a wig I'm gonna wear a protective style I'm gonna I don't really wear weaves but that's what works for me but i do not neglect my hair inside so i make sure that i comb it i make sure that i oil it i make sure that i wash it i make sure that i'm using protein treatments i make sure that i'm taking good care of this hair because i love my hair and there's a lot of uh, videos on online that you can watch that can help you to take care of your hair according to the hair type that you have so that's part of self-care and then there's um maybe one of your goals which is also part of self-care is to make your life more beautiful and this also ties in with your mental health i think i don't know maybe it's different for everybody i think traveling really helps to make your life more beautiful not just physically but mentally you begin to learn so much about different environments, about different cultures, about different people. You begin to step outside of the box of my city and my country or my street. And traveling, it doesn't always have to be to another country. Um, it doesn't have to be something that is international all the time. You can travel around your country. You can travel around your region. 
I find that even visiting places like art galleries and museums, you learn so much that begins to open your mind and you begin to meet strangers and just talk with strangers. I, I believe this is very important for self-care, broadening your mindset, broadening the way that you view yourself and you view other people. Sometimes we are stuck in these mindsets and these way of living because in a certain way of living because we just are always inside of our house self-care i believe is also about getting outside of your house just travel somewhere do it solo you don't need to always take somebody with you just go somewhere maybe with your kids maybe with your friends maybe solo maybe with your spouse just do something to get outside of the house visit historical places learn about the history of your country the history about where you live right now just travel and go out and explore the world it's such a beautiful world out there there's so much to see and i definitely think this is part of self-care so traveling so again your diary what days can i travel what days can i explore and this doesn't have to be very very frequent it can be once every three months you're gonna explore your region you're gonna explore your city you're gonna explore your country or you're gonna explore the world internationally depending on what works with your budget when people hear travel they suddenly think oh expenses and it can be quite affordable for example you never know what's around you maybe there's art galleries and there's museums and these are places that you can just walk to explore your culture explore different cultures this is part of self-care this is part of also your mental health do something outside of staying in your home and watching Netflix I mean we've been in a pandemic uh, ladies it's time for us to just explore a little bit more and get outside of the house don't be stuck in the same space by the end of the year find out things that you have enjoyed outside of your home outside of the environment that you used to step outside of the box it's not embarrassing to go and watch a movie alone it's not embarrassing anymore to sit at a restaurant alone those things are not embarrassing anymore you can scroll on social media in a restaurant and just have a meal on your own scroll and look at pictures and look at beautiful things read books on your phone and just enjoy the experience the quietness enjoy the experience of going out on your own so that's what I want to say about that in terms of self-care now there's different things that I probably haven't said or mentioned but I'm sure you have a vision that you have concerning self-care so physically traveling how many times and how much time can you give to yourself can you take time off once every four months once every three months to just travel around your city sometimes it just means you have to save a little bit more eat less out just so you can save and just treat yourself to maybe a one night in a hotel in your city and just explore the city maybe one night in a hotel two nights somewhere that is a bit outside of your city or outside of your region to just explore and just treat yourself and also just uh, some of the things that you can do in terms of self-care is making your life more beautiful besides your bedding and your sheets um, flowers what do you guys think about flowers most women like flowers I never used to like flowers before until I met Lloyd because <laughs> he used to buy me a lot of flowers then I just started to like flowers but flowers just make you know your space beautiful they just give you that warm feeling and this is something about flowers that's just so nice why don't you buy yourself flowers maybe once a month get a subscription for flowers that you can put in your bedroom or you can put in your house maybe just go and pick some flowers somewhere there are fields here in england um in some places <laughs> we have fields where there'll just be flowers you can go and pick some flowers there uh, but not somebody's field don't steal flowers from somebody's field so just get flowers and just put in your house just beautify your space and make it something that is enjoyable especially if you spend a lot of time at home make your space enjoyable candles flowers um, when I was single I used to enjoy my Saturdays because I know that on Saturday this is the time that I'm spending with the Lord so I would light candles in my house 
so that I'll have all these beautiful scents and it was just such a nice feeling to wake up you know get ready and just light some candles and just spend time just at home you know studying the word it's just such a nice feeling especially when it's snowing or when it's just cold outside and you just enjoy your time and your space so get some candles put it in your diary every Saturday I'll light a candle or every evening when I come from work I'm gonna light some candles so that's what you can do in terms of candles and just making your space more beautiful and another thing that I feel is very important for us ladies is also perfuming ourselves is very important perfuming ourselves taking care of our bodies and this is not health wise but just smelling good is important <laughs> smelling good whether you're single whether you're married it's for you and this will tie in again with what you wear um, we'll get into that smelling good is important learn how to perfume your body and you know the internet is full of so much information personally I recommend using oils learn how to perfume your body with the oils it's so important and it's just so luxurious and it's just so nice to be able to do that for yourself especially after you take a shower in the morning and in the evening learn how to perfume your body it's good for you i would recommend the rose hip oil in terms of oils for your skin i recommend rose hip oil use a bit of essential oils to perfume i would mix that with a bit of some essential oils maybe vanilla lavender rose it depends what, with what you like so find essential oils that have a smell that you like whether it's fruity rosy sweet or spicy and then mix those essential oils with a rosehip oil try and get something that's organic and learn how to perfume your body personally I don't actually use um, lotions and things like that for my body I only use oils and you know my skin is so soft my skin feels amazing and if you struggle with things like stretch marks and body marks I believe rose oil can help you with that it's really good at not just moisturizing your body but hydrating it and also clearing some of the marks that you might have on your body it helps with stretch marks and all sorts of things so I would highly recommend that also something that you can do is you can mix your perfume so if you have an eau de perfume um, I was teaching my husband the other day um, all about perfume so he doesn't know the difference between an eau de toilette and and an eau de perfume so I was teaching him the differences so now he knows about perfumes and I would recommend that you use your eau de perfume spray it in your hand and then pour some oil perhaps rose hip oil and just mix that together and just put it all over your body so if you don't want to mix those oils with essential oils mix your perfume with those with those oils and you'll smell amazing when you go to bed and you'll smell amazing in the morning and this is not outside of spraying perfume this is just in terms of perfuming your skin and your body so I think that's so important and this is something that I would recommend every time you take a shower especially at night you want to go to bed smelling good you want to get into your sheets your nice bedding with your nice mattress with your flowers on the side or your flowers somewhere in the, in the room or in your house so you want just that nice feeling of your skin just that nice feeling in your mind when you go to bed so I would highly recommend that you can put that in your diary I don't really think you need to put that in your diary actually perfuming um, but what you can do let's say for example you like perfume you can make this a hobby of yourself so you can start to collect perfumes and wait for a time when they are sales so Black Friday Christmas sales January sales check all those times and begin to collect some of their favorite perfumes collect different types of perfume so if you're somebody that likes to to that likes perfume this can be a hobby that you can take on a hobby of collecting perfume so I highly recommend that in terms of self-care so this is the physical aspect of things then we also have things like maybe you want to make more friends by the end of the year physically that's your vision you want more friends by the end of the year you want to make more friends by the end of the year you want to have some good friendships and the Bible says that he who desires to have friends 
must himself be friendly. I believe it's in the book of Proverbs. He who desires friends should himself be friendly. So the plan to get to that place where you can make friends by the end of the year is to be friendly. How can I be more friendly? It's a question you need to ask yourself. How can I be more friendly? Before we put down the plan in our diary, the vision, the vision is to, is to make more friends. So you put that down in your vision book. But how do we get there? The Bible gives us a way. Be friendly. So as a task or as a plan or something that is doable, steps that you can take, you can begin to think of ways that you can be friendly. For example, speaking to strangers. Um, do you go shopping to the supermarket? Do you go out of your house to do something that you do regularly? What do you do outside of your house regularly? Maybe even at your job, you don't even speak to anybody. Maybe in university, you don't speak to anybody. Is there a way that you can start being friendly to those around your life, outside of your relatives, outside of your family, those that you don't know? So, number one, smiling. Smiling is good. Smiling is great. Some, sometimes, um, you know, not everyone has a friendly face, but it doesn't mean that they are not friendly. But do it on purpose. Just smile at strangers. Just say hello to strangers. Hello. And just smile. For example, maybe you're in a train or you visit your dentist and there's other people sitting in the waiting room. Just say hello to everybody. Hi. Before you sit down, just be nice. And I know these days we have masks that we wear, so not everyone is not going to see your smile. I understand that bit, but just say hello to people. Just be warm. Just be nice. Just be friendly. Set a challenge for yourself and say, every week, I'm going to compliment one person every week. Put it in your diary. So every week on a Friday, I will compliment a total stranger that I meet. Every week on a Wednesday, I will strike up a conversation with a stranger, whether it's at the airport, whether it's at the supermarket. And sometimes this is how, let's say you're single. Sometimes this is how you're going to meet your spouse. They're not going to knock at your door. Sometimes it's just striking a conversation at a place that is unfamiliar with a person that is unfamiliar to you. So these are the ways that you can put a structure down, smiling complimenting someone once a week striking a conversation with someone once a week this is something that you're going to put in your diary so these are the steps that you're going to take because the bible is telling us the way to make friends is to first be friendly ourselves so that is what i can recommend in terms of being friendly and just pay less attention to self and more attention to others and what i mean by that is that um humility also helps us to make friends Sometimes it can just be an issue of pride, like I, I don't have to speak to them and why should I speak to that person? They're a different race than me. They're from a different culture. I don't have to speak to them. You know, I, I don't have to do that. I don't have to do this. But sometimes it's about just taking the first step, just being humble, not being prideful, not always expecting things to come my way, not always about me, 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 myself and I. Sometimes it's about thinking of other people, just paying attention even in conversations. Perhaps you are in education, perhaps you're working and you hear people having a conversation, just join in the conversation. You don't have to be like goody two shoes because they're not Christians and you're a Christian so because you're, you're a Christian and they're not Christians, you're not gonna talk to them. That's not really how it works. Jesus himself would talk to people. Jesus would talk to random people, people who are not Hebrews, people who are not Jews, anybody, women, kids, anybody. The Lord fit in, in every sphere and every space. And I believe it can be the same for us. Let us just be humble. Humility, not just friendliness, but humility, being kind, being giving. So how can I give more? How can I be more kind? Because these are the steps to make more friends. And of course, you know, there's a lot of selfishness now. And, you know, maybe you're worried that you're going to have a bad friend. You're worried that the friend won't be a good person. Don't worry about that. Start with yourself. Be kind. Be humble. Be friendly.
so if that is your goal this is what I recommend and that's the steps that you can take and I tell you by the end of the year you have a lot of friends by the end of the year and it doesn't mean that you're besties but you just have more friends because of how nice you are and how friendly you are so these are the physical goals I don't know if there's any other physical goals that you personally have but I hope that you can be able to put them into your diary and to put steps that you can implement uh, on a weekly or on a monthly basis by the end of the year you will be somewhere I'm just remembering I've not mentioned exercising in terms of your health uh, those of you that have a goal to be more healthy there's also exercise again with all these things we have to look at our time we have to look at our season our availability um, are we able to handle certain things so in terms of exercise and this goes back to being more healthy so how are you going to exercise when are you going to exercise uh, where do you have to go to exercise where do you have to travel to what type of exercises are you going to take and this ties in again with your diet um, and different things in terms of being healthy so that's the physical aspect of things as you can see physically there's a lot to cover but I hope that I've covered a lot of it for you um, so we can move on ministry ministry and career so by december 2022 where do you see yourself in terms of ministry if you're in ministry and where do you see yourself in terms of your career in life where are you seeing yourself my tea is already cold so i'm not having that anymore and it's almost dinner time so i'm gonna put that on the side and then we'll focus on you and the goals that you have so in terms of ministry so let's start with ministry your ministry can be uh, you're an author your ministry can be you're a worshiper your ministry could be that you're a singer it could be that you're a preacher a teacher a pastor a prophet evangelist um, apostle your ministry can be you are a financier in the kingdom of God so it's just giving your ministry can be interceding you are praying behind the scenes uh, it can be that you're an usher I mean it's different things in terms of ministry so where are you in ministry who are you in ministry so that's the first question who am I in terms of the ministry that God has given me who am I in terms of the ministry that God has given me and it doesn't have to be one thing it can be multiple things that God has gifted you in so it's to look at your gifts and who you are what has God placed you in and where do you see yourself in December obviously a lot of us we want to grow in ministry so how can we grow in this ministry that God has given us I'm gonna use the example of the author maybe an author or God is calling you to write some books so obviously maybe your goal is to write a book by the end of the year how are we going to get there how are we going to get there maybe it's singing a song maybe it's in the choir it's increasing in your position maybe growing evolving and edifying yourself in that area of your ministry how are you going to get there the first and important thing is to not strive to grow because you want to be better than so and so or you are comparing yourself to so and so so as an author you want to focus on your lane focus on your lane just because the late great Miles Monroe has a lot of books that he has authored doesn't mean now you need to write 10 books this year and you haven't written any books before but your goal is to write 10 books that's very great and very ambitious but are you capable of writing 10 books according to your season and according to your time so obviously all of us we want to grow in ministry so in the ministry of writing books Maybe your goal is to grow. That means you have to write a book by the end of the year. So you want to write a book by the end of the year. How are you going to get there? First of all, you have to look at your time. How much time can you put into writing the book? How much time can you put into writing the book? And also, do you have a deadline? And how many books do you want to write? Is it just one book by the end of the year? And when do you want to release that book? 
so it's gonna take research and preparation and also prayer finding out when God wants you to release the book finding out what God wants you to write in the book sometimes people get into this race and they're running around like rats in this race you are running around like a rat because you're trying to be like author so-and-so who releases two books every year but you're not author so-and-so and you're trying to rele release a book in a particular season of the year maybe you're trying to release a book in april because everybody else releases a book in april but maybe that's not god's desire for you so find out what is god's desire but also having a goal like the goal is to release the book by the end of the year. The goal is to release the book in this particular month. Maybe it's October. But find out what does God want you to do. Maybe he wants you to f write the book and finalize it by the end of the year. But he wants you to release it next year, 2023. So it's important that you find out what God wants you to do. Get the design from him. Like Noah, get the design from him. Like Moses, get the design from him. Then we're going to go in our diary. How much time can I give into writing this book? Can I spend 30 minutes a day writing my book? 30 minutes. So you need to pick out the days that you want to write, the days that you want to focus on this book, the days that you want to research concerning your book, concerning that topic, the things that you're going to use, the platforms that you're going to use for that book. Is it Kindle? Is it Amazon? Is it self-published? Is it uh, a publisher that you're going to research on? Maybe you want a particular publisher. All those things you need to find out in order for that vision to come to pass. It's not enough to just say, I want to write a book. There's a lot that you need to look into. But first, you must get the picture from God. And second of all, you must look at your time and your season. Are you capable of writing the book and releasing it this year? Look at things like marketing, advertising. These are extra things that you also need to look into. Personally, I believe the Holy Spirit is the biggest uh, advertiser and the biggest marketer ever is the Holy Spirit. I look at the ministry of Jesus Christ. He never needed to do any marketing or any advertising, but it's also important in the modern world to know how to go about certain things with wisdom. So of course there's an anointing upon your life and the Holy Spirit is able to bring people, but you also need to know how to advertise, how to speak about your book, how to market your book, how to sell your book. It's important to know all those things. So that's in terms of ministry. And again, this applies to any ministry. Um, maybe you're behind the scenes and you're an intercessor. How can you grow as an intercessor? Because God is probably desiring you to begin to pray for presidents. And not just for your neighborhood, not just for your city, but now for nations. How do you get to that place? We have to go back again to your spiritual life. You have to commit time to pray. That ministry will require you to commit time to pray. So it goes back to going to your diary. What are those days and this time that you're going to focus on prayer? So maybe you said, I want to pray two hours on a Thursday and on a Tuesday. That's the time that you want to pray on a Tuesday and on a Thursday for two hours, maybe at 3 a.m. or 5 a.m. So then you have to look into this like, okay, on Thursday specifically, I am going to pray for such and such a thing, for so and so a person, for such and such a nation. I'm going to be praying for my family. I'm going to be praying for my city. I'm going to be praying for my country. I'm going to be praying for presidents. So then you know that on Thursday specifically, I spend time praying for other people. Then on Tuesdays, this is when I focus on praying for myself or edifying myself, speaking in tongues, etc., etc. So now you know that on Thursdays, I'm praying for others. Thursdays, I'm for praying for others. So that's what you can put in your diary. That's what you can put in your plan so that you know that this specific time, this is what I'm doing. And I believe that by the end of the year, God will take you somewhere that is great. God will begin to show you secrets concerning nations secrets concerning presidents even beginning to tap into the prophetic prophesying prophetic not just prophetic prayer but also utterance because of your obedience and faithfulness and that sacrifice of praying for nations 
so that's what I can advise in terms of ministry that particular ministry of course there's different kinds of ministries but it's all about growing setting a plan putting a plan in place in your diary following up on that plan then we have the career aspect of your life so what career are you are you in what career do you want to have are you happy with your job are you happy with where you are in your career by December where do you see yourself maybe you're a singer maybe you're an actress maybe you're a model maybe you're a nurse maybe you're a teacher maybe you're still in university where do you see yourself by December and it's important to dream big you have to see it from the realm of faith so wherever you see yourself see it from a place of faith because perhaps you have dreams that seem ginomic they seem too big for where you are right now for example Joseph at the age of 17 he was dreaming that his family and his brothers were bowing down to him he was already dreaming of his future um, as a ruler in Egypt so this was at the age of 17 but realistically the time frame to get to that took about 13 years to get to that place so you might have certain dreams concerning your career but it's going to take a bit of time because God is going to begin to train you God wants to teach you how to handle that kind of influence or that kind of seat that you are seeing or envisioning in your life so don't be discouraged when that thing doesn't happen this year but we can still make steps to get to that place in 2022 so perhaps in your career you are working at this certain job but you'll see yourself as a director so how can you become a director what steps can you take in that place well number one the bible tells us faithfulness it's important working as unto the lord being cheerful and just working hard working hard diligence there's certain characteristics that we can begin to employ to get to that place where we live in the reality of that vision diligence is important consistency is important you can't say I want to be a director but you don't show up for work and when you show up you're just like uh -huh, not really cheerful you just are kind of boring and just you're like a cloud to everybody so it's how how bad do you want this vision what are you willing to do are you willing to change even your character are you willing to change your character and I don't mean change it to make it corrupt but to make it more edified are you willing to grow so for example you want to be a director get information concerning people that are in that place or that sphere in that company how did they get to that place speak to people speak to the directors don't speak to them in a way to get their position but in a way to acquire knowledge and understanding you want to be a global singer find out how others got there what did they need to do perhaps it was perseverance there will always be a similar thing that they had to do to get to there most of them it will be consistency and hard work they had to lose some sleep a lot of them didn't sleep eight hours a day for years but they slept maybe five hours a day for years they had to work hard to get to where they are they had to invest in themselves take courses get training they had to research information so how can I get to that place these are the things that you can begin to put in your diary do I need to get more information do I need to travel a little bit more perhaps like me you're a fashion designer how do you get to a place where you begin to de design and make clothes that people can really buy maybe do you need to travel around discover different fabrics discover different cultures get things that can inspire you outside of your hometown outside of your city and your country there's a lot that you can look into and it's very exciting to begin to pick these things what can I do how can I be more diligent how can I be more diligent maybe it means you have to stay on your desk even after work when people are rushing at 5 p.m. to go home you are willing to give in that extra 15 minutes because you want your work to be perfect you are so articulate in how you do things you want your stuff to be right to be effective you want to cause a difference between you and other employees you want to stand out like Daniel what can you do to stand out perhaps it means maybe once every two weeks 
doing overtime and you don't have to be paid doing overtime for 30 minutes just to perfect your work paying more attention when you are in training maybe it means you have to drink coffee maybe it means that you have to get enough sleep what are the changes that you can do what are the steps that you can do to perfect your work is there extra training courses that you can take online that are free to perfect your work in your career and in ministry perhaps your ministry is prophetic find out about this prophetic gift how can I be edified and a lot of it has to do in terms of the prophetic and those other ministries a lot of it is prayer and the study of the word simple as that prayer the study of the word that's how you grow it's all about information it's all about acquiring and understanding information in fact in careers as well acquiring and understanding information and also being a nice person a nice person to other people you know those who are really successful and who are up there in terms of career these people are not mean people most of them are nice people most of them are down to earth and that's what it takes don't turn up your nose and say hey I'm so talented I'm so gifted and I believe that I'm gonna get to that position be a nice person just be down to earth just be nice there's nothing wrong you won't lose anything by being nice just be a nice person talk to people talk to people at work talk to people in your class so in terms of your career and in terms of ministry I think it's so important again these are steps that you can put in place what steps can you put in place these are things that you can put in your planner so you know that every Friday there's a course that I'm taking in order to help me in going higher in my career going higher in ministry perhaps you are wanting to go into blogging but you're so afraid because there's already too many bloggers at the moment but the difference between you and them is your authenticity and it's also consistency your authenticity is important and your consistency is important so if you're gonna be a blogger how many days are you going to blog how many days a week are you going to blog how many days a month are you going to blog who are you as a blogger what brings you joy it's not about what other people are doing but what is going to make you stand out it's your authenticity because there's no one like you I've said this before say this with me I am say your name so I am Daphne there's nobody like me and there will never be anybody like me you are your power your authenticity is your power it's your value increase that value the more and more authentic you are the more and more that you'll stand out despite the trends and what's popular it's important to be authentic so that's that in terms of career and ministry and let's move on to the last one don't know how long this video is gonna be but I really want us to cover everything of course I probably haven't covered everything per se but hopefully I've covered a lot of it financially I think this is pretty much the same for everybody <laughs> despite where you are financially so financially where do you see yourself in December 2022 financially where do you see yourself I'm sure you see yourself better financially uh, you see financial freedom probably getting out of debt saving a bit more growing financially in your business or growing in your paycheck um, budgeting so there's things that we can look at financially so let's start with getting out of debt what I will do is I will include uh, spreadsheets that I use so I have a spreadsheet that basically I note down everything that I get and everything that I spend down to the penny I've shared this a few years ago and I'll share it again with you so I basically have um, a list of spreadsheets one is outflow one is inflow a summary of all the finances that have come in in that year uh, profits net net profit uh, spending and then budgeting and then things to do things like first fruit tithing and offering giving to missionaries um, supporting organizations so it's important to know exactly 
how much money you have, how much money you make, and how much money you spend. How much money is going out of you? It's very important to know so that if you plan to get out of debt, at least you have a, an amount that you can begin to put away or put aside in terms of getting out of debt, whether it's paying overdrafts, whether it's paying uh, student loans or any kind of loans, um, anything that is on finance, whether it's paying that off. It's important to know how much you can set aside for that. Uh, as Christians, we give offering first fruits, tithes, these are things that we do as a Christian. So it's important to know exactly what's coming in so that you know how much you can tithe, how much you can give it as an offering, and also how much you can save from your income. They normally recommend that you save 15%, but what I would say is save a percentage that you are able to save. For example, if all your paycheck is gone after your tithes, and you've paid all your bills and all that you have left with is 10% to live on, save 5% of that. So do what you can according to your ability, but make sure that you do save. But this first starts with knowing what's coming in and what's going out. Nowadays, there's so many subscriptions that we pay, Netflix, Amazon Prime, flower subscriptions, and subscriptions for websites, subscriptions for all sorts of things. So these are little amounts that can begin to accumulate over time. And by the end of the month, you're spending 300 pounds on subscription so is there anything that you can cut down so that you can get out of debt is there anything that you can cut down in order to get out of debt some say that you shouldn't save if you're in debt but i think you should still save and get out of debt you can do both so i will share these spreadsheets with you hopefully they can give you a plan on what to do and what's coming in and what's going out uh, i'll share these spreadsheets with you uh, hopefully i can do that by, by the time i upload this video hopefully hopefully i can't promise because it's, it's quite a bit um but hopefully by the time i upload this video i can put those spreadsheets in the description box for you so in terms of getting out of debt that's what I can advise. So again, you have your diary. So the goal is to get out of debt. How much debt do you want to get out of by the end of the year? And if you have multiple debts, which one are you really focused on clearing? So that's very important and you have to be realistic with your budgets. So for example, you can put, depending on what's coming in and what's going out, maybe set aside 300 pounds to pay a particular debt and pay it every month until you've paid it off because that's what you can manage. Maybe you can manage a thousand pounds every month. Maybe you can manage 5,000 pounds every month. As long as you're making some sort of progress in paying things off, that's very important. So number two, financially, maybe you want to save more. Saving and getting out of debt is gonna require some sacrifice. Sometimes it's cutting off the subscriptions that you have, luxuries, you know, things like Netflix and these are luxuries and they may not seem like luxuries, but they really are. So is there something that you can cut out in order to save more? Perhaps you buy takeaway four times a week and you're spending hundred pounds on takeaway every week. So that means by the end of the month, you've spent 400 pounds on takeaway. That 400 pounds could be used as your savings. So what is it that you can cut down? It requires knowing what's coming in and what's going out, but you have no knowledge of what's coming in your bank account. That is not wise. It is not wise to not know what's coming in and what's going out. It's like sleeping in a house, but you leave your front door open. Anyone can come in at any time and anyone can go out at any time. We must have boundaries, boundaries. What's coming in, what's going out. That's very important. And maybe another goal that you have is budgeting. Again, with budgeting, with getting out of debt, with saving more, this requires us to know what's coming in and what's going out. So again, I will share these spreadsheets with you, but you need to make a plan. You need to make a plan. Um, I believe that on Amazon, there are budgeting books that you can buy, planners. There's a lot of planners that you can use, saving planners, budgeting planners, getting out of debt planners. Um, is it Gordon Ram, wait, what's this guy's name? 
he's quite good in terms of discussing budgeting and let me just find out what his name is Dave Ramsey <laughs> I was thinking of Gordon Ramsey but I know Gordon Ramsey is a chef Dave Ramsey is really good I would recommend uh, subscribing to his channel and if you want to learn about saving and budgeting there's a lot of stuff that he shares I believe he's also a Christian so he does share from also a biblically point of view um, yeah basically <laughs> So uh, Dave Ramsey or people like that who can, who are really certified and who are experienced in terms of finances. Personally, um, I read certain books concerning finances. Uh, this is an area that I've been working on in my personal life, an area that I want to continue to work on um, to edify myself. So I normally read quite a bit on finances and things like that. So. Um, yeah, you can read about that to help you to plan in terms of 2022. Uh, but again, this goes back to what's coming in and what's going out. You have to work with what you have. Don't be discouraged because maybe what you have left is not a lot. But no matter how small the step is, even if it's 50 pounds a month, no matter how small the step is, the important thing is that you're making steps to save, you're making steps to budget, you're making steps to get out of debt and that's so important and that's still very admirable so that's that um, in terms of uh, finances perhaps another goal that you may have is to grow your business how do you grow your business again this comes down to research what kind of a business do you have it comes down to consistency it comes down to marketing advertising prayer getting ideas from the Holy Spirit how can I grow my business and what kind of a business is it so it's investing not just in your business but investing in yourself that's how you can grow in that thing that's how you can grow in your business just like you can grow in your career so again is to implement put a plan in your diary and put steps in your planner on how to get there um so i think i think that's that financially i don't know if you have any other questions i don't know if you have any questions but what we'll do is we will have a chat live where we can sort of fellowship together if i have not spoken on a topic that maybe you wanted to find out information about but hopefully this video does help we have covered spiritually we've covered mentally physically ministry and career we've also covered finances so hopefully this can help you for the year of 2022 what an exciting year um there's also something that i wanted to mention um for year 22 and depending on where you are in life if you're single these things you have to do on your own but if you're married it's important to do it together with your spouse and some of these things, if you're a mother, you can begin to apply them to your children. So for example, fasting, you can begin to fast for your children, save and budget for your children. So obviously, depending on responsibility, the more responsibility, the more uh, other people are involved in this plan that you have for 2022. And I believe that it works for everybody. So I hope that you found this very beneficial. My battery is about to die. Um, but let's just pray quickly and just commit everything to the Lord. Everything that we've discussed, everything that you've written down. Let's just commit this to the Lord. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. I thank you for your daughters, even your sons that may be watching. Mighty God, we commit these plans to you, these visions to you. Father, these goals and steps to you. Father, prosper. Prosper them, Lord, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, guide your people, empower your people to accomplish and to live in the reality of these visions that they've written down plainly. As they run and as they read them, Father, let your power manifest, your dynamis power manifest in their lives for your glory. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. God bless you. Um, I hope that this has been helpful. And I love you with the love of Christ. And I just want to see you grow. I just want to see you um, be everything that God has created you to be. So take care. God bless you. And I'll see you next week. Bye.